Hello and welcome to another lab cast. Today I will be demonstrating how to separate the pigments in leaves through a process called chromatography. We'll be trying to separate four pigments. Chlorophyll A, which has a bright green color. Chlorophyll B, which has a dull or olive green color. Xanthophyll, which has a uh, yellowish color. And carotene, which is typically orange. Most leaves are green because they have an abundance of chlorophyll A and B. In the fall, when leaves begin to change colors, the trees stop making chlorophyll and it dissipates out of the leaves. The accessory pigments, xanthophyll and carotene, are then more easily seen, which is why the trees begin to turn red, orange, and yellow colors. These pigments have always been there, they just aren't typically seen because they're overpowered by chlorophyll A and B. We'll be using a process called paper chromatography. Chromatography works on the principle that different pigments, when dissolved in a solute, such as water, ether, or alcohol, will move through a piece of paper at different rates of speed. The speed is determined by two things. Number one, how soluble the pigment is in the solvent. And number two, the degree of adhesion the pigment has to the paper. In this lab, you'll be preparing a chromatogram, a simple tool that can separate pigments. The key to identifying the different pigments in the leaf is measuring how far the pigment has traveled from its starting point. You'll need to take very careful measurements during this lab. You'll be calculating the RF values for each pigment. RF stands for retardation factor. This factor is calculated by comparing the distance the solvent has moved with the distance that the pigment has moved. By looking at these two things, we can determine the different pigments and which pigment has traveled the farthest. That's the background. Let's get started on the lab. For this lab, you'll need a centimeter ruler, a pencil, a glass jar, some chromatography paper, a coin, some leaf material, and some rubbing alcohol. Use your pencil and ruler to draw a line on your chromatography paper two centimeters from the bottom. It's very important that you do not use pen to draw your line. If you do use a pen, you'll find that your line will move up your chromatography paper. The next thing you need to do is to transfer some pigment in a leaf onto the line you drew on your chromatography paper. You can use any type of leaf that you like. In my demonstration, I'm using lettuce leaves. You'll actually achieve better results if you use leaves from a tree such as an oak or a maple because they have more accessory pigments like xanthophyll and carotene. Take your leaf, lay it on top of your chromatography paper, and using a coin or the end of a pencil, start grinding those pigments into the chromatography paper. You want to try to keep the pigments right on the line. If you go a little above or a little below, it'll be okay, but get as close as you can to the line. You also want to make sure that you don't allow the pigment to touch the bottom of the chromatography paper. Get it as close to that line as you can. The more pigment that you transfer onto your chromatography paper, the better results your lab will have. So keep adding that pigment until your teacher tells you to stop. When you're finished, you should have quite a bit of pigment on your chromatography paper. Next, you'll take your glass jar and add some rubbing alcohol. You just need enough alcohol to cover the very, very bottom of the jar. Place your chromatography paper with the pigment on it down so that it is touching the alcohol. You don't need to soak your paper, just make sure that it's touching the alcohol. The chromatography paper will act like a wick and draw up the alcohol. It will also bring the pigments along with it, and because they'll travel at different speeds, they'll begin to separate. As you can see here, the dark green that we started with is starting to separate out into light green and an olive green. This is because the spinach leaves that I'm using have high concentrations of chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. 
For resources related to this lab, including student worksheets and teacher guides, visit www.jrsowash.wikispaces.com slash labcast.